I managed to squeeze just enough phone signal out of my 4G's this morning to have a half hour zoom with my parents. The 4G's are so bad here now, especially since they started getting rid of the 3G's. Um, I'm on Smarty which runs through 3 and it's just appalling. But anyway, and we just talk about general stuff and then my mum always tries to steer the conversation towards politics. My mum's politics are pretty dreadful, but they are nearly 80. And I made them, a, we were talking about um, some climate change stuff. We were talking about the use of different kinds of energy and things like that. And we, electric cars got mentioned and I made the mistake of mentioning Elon Musk, who it turns out my mum thinks is wonderful. Very intelligent man. And, of course, then it transpired, perhaps not surprising, that my mum is a massive Trump fan. And I basically said, right, we're going to stop that conversation there. I'm not having this conversation. And she says, oh, well, yeah, that's university students. I went to university at 35. And she's basically accusing me of being woke. I am so not woke. But my... Mother's politics are appalling. She's obsessed by GB News. She's obsessed by Ni Nigel Farage. Massive fan of Boris Johnson. And perhaps not surprisingly, a massive fan of Trump and Elon Musk. And this is why we can't talk about politics. I mean, I don't really have any politics. I'm massively on the fence. I think that they are all self-serving money-grabbing liars, basically. The only thing we now agree on is that Labour's doing a terrible job. But I try my best not to have conversations about politics because it's so incendiary. It's just awful. And when you get a confirmation like how wonderful Trump is and that, oh, well, you're so woke, you're, you, you, know, you went to university... I actually find it really distressing that my mother's politics are that dreadful. And it doesn't surprise me. But she's got worse as she's got older, as she's allowed herself to be, you know, very blinkered vision of the world based on, you know, she'll only watch certain things, she'll only watch GB News. She gets all her information from GB News. So the other week I, I asked them if they were going to be watching Wolf Hall the new adaptation of Hilary Mantel's The Mirror and the Light. Um, my dad has read all the books, so that's why I asked. And I have tried to read one of the books, and they are like tombstones. They're massive, and I couldn't do it. But I've been watching it, and it's quite good. I quite enjoy it. It's a much easier way to digest an incredibly heavy book. And so I said to my mum, I said, are you, going, are, are you going to be watching The Wolf Hall? And she said, no, because it's full of black people. Uh, I said, what do you mean it's full of black people? She said, well, my friend Jenny, who's, um, like, uh, Tudor history is her thing. She says it's full of black people and it's not accurate. Now, I've watched two episodes. So I did I did go and Google this because I thought, oh, well, this is... I mean, it's a BBC thing. And I remember that um, BBC does tend to be a little bit on the woke side. It tries to appeal to certain people and I went to the cinema at the beginning of the year to see I think it was called Little Letters it had Olivia Coleman in it and that was pretty dreadful in terms of that it was a historically factual event that had occurred and so most all the main characters were real people in real life in 1920s is it uh, Cornwall or Devon? I can't remember exactly. It was a village somewhere. Oh, it's Sussex, Surrey Coast, Sussex Coast. I can't remember. In the 1920s, so it was just post World War One. Completely, you could you could go onto the internet and find the real people, pictures of them, what they did, who they were, and they'd swapped out a lot of the main characters for um, people of ethnic minorities that would not have been living in a tiny village post-war 
and were not the real people. And that bugged me because purely because if you're making something historically accurate, you must make the characters be historically accurate. Because that's history. You can't if it if, if if that film had been fictional, I wouldn't have cared that the postmaster at the uh, in the village was a a black woman. Uh, it wouldn't have bothered me that um, the policewoman in it was uh, a woman of Indian descent. Um, it was just all over the place, and it inaccurately inaccurately portrayed history because people will watch that know that it's based in fact and will think that those people existed and they didn't anyway so back to Warfall so I've watched I, I did google it and of course not surprisingly GB News screaming and shouting about all the black people that are in Warfall very inaccurate and I know that it's it's a fictional piece based on historical accuracy so Hilary Mantel is writing her books um, the main character really in it is Thomas Cromwell and it's Henry VIII and it's his wives and all that sort of thing so it needs to be accurate um, so yeah GB News front page of everything woke madness all gone crazy la di da di da and I also googled I googled how many ethnic minorities or how many black people lived in Britain in Tudor times and Britain was not a completely white country back then we had a lot of trade um, ships navy all that sort of thing and they were going all over the world and they were and people were traveling between countries all the time there were always um, traders and emissaries coming from other countries to meet royal people and do trade in the UK so there were foreign people and in the courts of say Henry VIII and Elizabeth I there were foreign people you know you had people from France from Italy from Spain Portugal and there were black people people of black uh, descent uh, of, of ancestry so they looked like black people and so I watched the first episode and I glimpsed very, very briefly a black man in the court of Henry VIII around the table when he's doing his, you know, his, his talking to his, his people around him. And there was one guy in the back corner kind of sitting there with all the others looking official, no speaking part. That's the only black person I've actually seen so far. Episode two there is a woman in there who she speaks with a very English accent she doesn't look completely English but she looks like she could have been from um, maybe Spanish or Italian um, ancestry her skin color was very fresh but she had that very kind of Mediterranean look to her but she could have been English you know, not all English people look very English. I've got lots of English people in my family who look like they are 100% Italians and they're not. So there was that. And then there was um, another woman who, um, she was living in a monastery and Thomas Cromwell went to see her. And she did not look English and then, so there was that one that was stood out a little bit more. And then there was, um, there was a chap at the beginning in episode one who I haven't seen since. And he is uh, a friend of Thomas Cromwell's. And his name's Thomas Wyatt, and he's real. He was a real man, and he was English. But he's speaking with an Egyptian accent. I found that very confusing. I didn't realise that this was this person. I thought it was an emissary who come from abroad, maybe France or Italy or something like that, and was visiting him. So that's why he had a foreign accent. So they cast an Egyptian guy, and he looked like he could have passed for English. But his accent was really, really strong. So that was a bit odd. So they haven't stuck entirely to the real life cast but 
it wasn't full of black people, as my mum said. And that's not because she watched it or read up about it, it's because she believed what GB News had told her. I just find it all very frustrating that, and this is the problem with politics, and I, I was thinking just after the, the, um, the Trump, the latest Trump win, should regular people actually be voting anymore? Because we seem to be regularly voting in the wrong people. So I think my thought is that the only reason Labour really got in here is because people just wanted to see the Conservatives humiliated. And despite we have all these other parties, own, people only ever think about Tories or Labour. Are you Tory or Labour? So if you wanted the Tories out and you wanted to see them humiliated, which people obviously did, and know that was a, a big thing, then you voted Labour. And of course Labour got in, probably got in as well as it did based on that rather than anything else. And of course now we have a government that is um, that promised it would not screw over working people and is royally screwing over working people. Probably the people who voted Labour thinking that Labour was somehow going to save the day. You never thought they were. You can't trust any of these parties. And I think it's a similar problem with Trump is that he had this sudden massive landslide like people had a sudden panic attack as they went to the to the polls. And I remember watching a YouTube video of this chap and he was walking around just before the election was due to happen. The, like the final, the calling. And he was asking people who they were going to vote for. And it turned out quite a lot of people who were going to vote didn't realise that Biden had stood down. Because the problem is, all the people who vote, most of them don't interact with politics at any other time, except when there is an election coming. So they don't sit down and analyse the data. They don't look at what they're saying. They don't try and find out if what they're promising, like all the things that Labour promised and are now withdrawing from us, they don't find out whether that's actually possible, whether that's just a, a manifesto pledge that we'll be back down on. And it's the same with, uh, with Trump. A lot of the things that Trump has said he will do, a lot of them will be blocked. A lot of them are things that he cannot do by law. A lot of them are, you know, crimes against people. You cannot... You know, he talks about throwing out all the all the foreigners, um, you know, the wall, all that kind of stuff. If you removed all the foreign people in America and threw them out, America would collapse because it survives off migrant workforces like a lot of us do. It survives off that. If you throw them out and the other people aren't working then what are you going to do? And he talks about, you know, banning all the, uh, putting up the charges up really, really high for imports from places like China. If you do that and you stop trading with places like China, I know they're awful and I hate the fact that we trade with places like China who is just such a dreadful country. They just, just do such awful things and they're so dangerous and so untrustworthy. But if you suddenly said tomorrow, right, nothing else is coming from China, are you aware that almost nothing, almost everything will grind to a halt. Pretty much everything you buy, not like groceries and things like that, but in terms of electronics and cars and materials and all sorts of things, huge amounts of it come from countries like China. And we are all so reliant on imports from trading with other countries that if you stopped that, we would all collapse in in no time look what happened in 2020 when we had covid and all the borders were shut all the ships stopped all the cargo flights stopped look at what happened we almost collapsed overnight because we cannot function without international trade and this is the implications for things like having a trump government and with the dreadful people that he's that he's trying to bring into his government. It sounds like a lot of them will be blocked, like he won't be able to, you know, put some people in charge, like Kennedy being in charge of healthcare, who is a conspiracy theorist and doesn't believe in healthcare. <laughs> oh my goodness. 
and people like Elon Musk, who is an absolute nutcase. Yes, in some ways he is very intelligent, but he is also a complete nutcase. And um, I am interested to see where things are going to go in the months ahead. I am trying not to watch the news. I'm trying. Uh, I, there are certain YouTube channels that I follow which keep it less heavy. But I'm trying not to do too much of it because it's just so depressing right now. Everything is just so awful. And now I have to actively avoid all conversations with my family because they're all Trump and Elon Musk supporters. And reform supporters. And it's just got to a level of crazy that I can't deal with anymore. <laughs> so. It's just so depressing. Um. I think I'm going to have to drink some beer this afternoon or crack open the gin bottle because... Oh my goodness. Christmas is going to be fun. I'm going to have to mentally prepare myself. Oh my goodness. I don't even know what to do. I don't even know what to say. It's just... And I'm sure lots of you are having the same the same issues with with family. And the only way to deal with it is not to talk about it at all. And I cannot believe that my mother just accused me of being woke. Oh, you went to university, you're woke. I'm absolutely insulted by that. I'm absolutely bloody furious about that, actually. Blooming 80 year olds. Anyway, that's it. I just needed to get that out of my system. And I hope you're having hope you're having a good week and that you're you're not having the same dreadful realisations that I'm having to put up with. Anyway, I'm gonna go. Um thank you for listening to me trying to get that out of my system. Speak to you soon. Bye-bye.